In this video, we're going to talk about factoring a number. And factoring is one of those things that's not too bad, um, as long as your multiplication skills are, are intact. So um, I know a lot of classes, you know, nowadays you're allowed to use a calculator. So, you know, my little, my little sermon here for a second, you know, be careful about using a calculator all the time because it's going to take away some of your basic math skills like multiplication, basic multiplication, addition, division, um, and it's going to make doing a lot of problems a lot harder. So if you've forgotten your multiplication tables, by all means, go write them down. Um, it's one of those things that will save you a ton of trouble. Okay, so thanks for bearing with me. So factoring a number, for example, 10, all we're trying to do is write it as a product. So I can write 10 as 2 times 5, and we want to use whole numbers when we factor a number. And notice I can't really break down either number. I can't write 2 as multiplication of any smaller numbers. I could only really write it as 2 times 1, and the same thing, I can't really break 5 down any further. It just would be 5 times 1. So this is now considered factored. 10 is now factored. When you have a number, for example, like 11, well, let's see, can we think of two numbers that multiply to give you 11? Well, 2 doesn't go into it. 3 won't go into it. 4 doesn't go into it. 5 doesn't go into it. And 6, you're bigger than halfway. So once you go beyond half, half the size of the number, none of those numbers will go into it. So the only thing we could really write 11 as is 1 times 11. And when we can't really break a number down any further, we call that number prime. So 11 is an example of a prime number. Some other prime numbers, 2 is prime. It's actually the only even prime number. 3 is prime, 5 is prime, 7 is prime. Now you may be spotting a pattern, 3, 5, 7, well 9, oh, but 9 is not prime because 3 will go into that. 11 is prime, 13 is prime, 17 is prime, uh, what would be the next one? 19 is prime, and they just keep going. So. Prime numbers actually have some very interesting properties. Um, they're definitely used very heavily in mathematics. They actually are used um, for a lot of coding, um, you know, making security codes, for example, for, com for computers, um, for your credit card, um, for encryption. So something as basic as prime numbers um, actually have a very huge um, impact on the world. They get used all over the place, but that's neither here nor there for now. So when it comes to factoring a number, you know, it can be a little tedious. Let's start with the number 124. A lot of times what people will do is they'll make what's called a factor tree and they'll basically just start breaking down the number. So I can write 124. Anytime I see an even number, I think, well, 2 will certainly go into that. And let's see, 2 times what? I think 62 will work. And then 2 I can only break down as 2 and 1, so we'll leave that alone. 62, again, I see an even number. I can break that down as 2 times 31. And now 31. Does any number go into that besides 1 and itself? And, you know, you can play around with it, but I think you can convince yourself relatively quickly that actually 31 is prime. So what we do is we look at the bottom of every little branch. So I follow this branch all the way down and the numbers at the bottom, if you list them all out and multiply them, those will be the factors of your number. And we could also write 2 times 2 times 31 as 2 squared times 31. And this factor form is sometimes what's known, the, known as the prime factorization because every number I'm left with, since I can't break it down any further, those will in fact, by definition, be prime numbers. 
So let's do maybe one more here. And this is really, again, basically the gist to, to factoring a number. Let's take a bigger number. Um, how about, I don't know, I'm just making them up here. How about 423? All right, so this is a pretty big number. You may think, wow, okay, it's not even, so certainly 2 doesn't go into it. What would be the next number that would go into it? Well, one little trick is, and there's definitely others, I'm not going to talk about them all. Notice if you add up the digits of 423, you get 4 plus 2 plus 3. If you add these numbers up, you get 9. And the idea is, if you add up the digits, if you get a number that's divisible by 3, then this original number is also divisible by 3. So kind of a little trick here. So certainly I know that 3 will now go into this number. And now I have to think, uh, you know, what's the other number that will go into it? Well, if I can't just guess it off the top of my head, I can always just do long division. So 3 will go into 4 one time. 1 times 3 is 3. Then I subtract. 4 minus 3 is 1. And remember, I drop down my next number, 2. And let's see. 3 will go into 12 four times. So 4 times 3 is 12. Again, I subtract. I get 0. I drop down my next number. I have 3. So I'm left with 141. So again, 141, that doesn't stick out to me real quickly as what number would go into that. But notice I can use the same trick that I did up here. If I add up the digits in 141, 1 plus 4 plus 1, I get 6. And again, 3 goes into 6, so that means that 3 will also go into this number. And kind of a little trick I use to make the arithmetic easier in my head, I pick a number close to 141 that I know 3 will go into. And 3 certainly goes into 15, which means it goes into 150. 3 would go into 150 50 times. Well, this is kind of 9 away, which means I need 3, three less 3s. So I think we can use 47. Okay, and you can check my arithmetic there. Um, I believe that should be okay. And now again, I'm thinking, what numbers go into 47? Well, off the top of my head, I can't think of too many numbers that do go into 47. In fact, pretty positive that that is a prime number. So again, I take the numbers at the bottom of the branches and it says that 423 is going to factor as 3 times 3 times 47, which we could write as 3 squared times 47. And again, that would be the prime factorization. Let's maybe do one more, kind of a smaller example. So 24, again, I see Certainly I could notice that 24 is even, but suppose I just said, oh, well, 3 and 8, those are two numbers that multiply and give me 24. Now I'll keep breaking it down. Two numbers that give me 8 are 2 and 4. Well, 3 doesn't break down any further, 2 doesn't break down any further, but I can factor 4 again as 2 times 2. Ran out of space here. And now all of the numbers that I'm left with at the bottom of the branches are prime. So I'll take each of those numbers. And it says 24 factors as 3 times 2 times 2 times 2. Or I can write that as 3 times 2 raised to the third power. And that would be the prime factorization. So one place where you're going to want to factor, for example, is when you're multiplying or dividing fractions. If you factor things out before you start multiplying or dividing your fractions, 
um, things will cancel out much quicker and much easier and you'll just get a reduced fraction much easier it'll certainly save you some time um, also one place where you're going to want to be able to factor numbers quickly is when you're solving equations you'll want to be able to factor things out um, so that you can help get solutions so for more videos definitely visit my website just mathtutoring.com there's lots of other basic videos on there um, basic arithmetic basic algebra all the way through some kind of more advanced calculus topics so trying to get a little bit of everything on there so I hope these basic examples help and good luck